Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for another episode of Retro FM. I have been a very busy boy over the summer. I've spent a lot of Man City's money. So let's jump in and see where I've spent all this cash. <laughs> So first things first, let's take a look at how last season finished. We did, of course, finish in sixth position with 70 points from our 38 games. Not the best return that we could have asked for, um, given the money that was spent in the first season. However, Manchester City in this actual season did finish seventh. So whilst I am disappointed, I'm not going to take it uh, too much to heart. They did win the, t uh, the title uh, in the next season. So that is my main goal. Uh, for this coming up. Uh, we did have some real issues uh, towards the end of the season. Uh, as I showed you guys last time, Shea Given did get injured, uh, which did cause uh, all sorts of issues uh, with Taylor having to come in in goal, who was awful. Things went from bad to worse because Taylor then uh, tore his hamstring, same injury as Shea Given. So I didn't really have any first choice goalkeepers in the team for about five weeks really did uh, put pay to any sort of push towards anything. Um, so we did finish sixth, which does mean we qualify for the Europa League. So we are in the Europa League this season. Um, I've strengthened immensely. I've moved a lot of players on. So I definitely feel that this is much more my squad uh, than what would have been Mark Hughes's for last season. So let's jump in and see how we have got on. So the first point I want to touch on is the fact that we have sold several people and we have just brought in just shy of £50 million to bolster the uh, transfer budget. I'm not really worried about the likes of Ben Mee going out on loan, uh, but Colo Torres moved on, sold him to Sevilla uh, for £15 million. Um, Adebayor, uh, he was used in a part exchange um, for someone who we brought in. Uh, Gareth Barry also gone to Atletico Madrid for 12 million. Uh, Craig Bellamy to Stoke for 5 million. Um, uh, Kieran Trippier, who knew that he was a Man City youth player? I didn't, uh, but he's gone to Birmingham. Um, uh, Donald McDermott has gone and joined Portsmouth. I sold Robinho, who was on loan at Santos last season. Uh, didn't extend his loan, called him back and sold him almost immediately to PSG. And then uh, finally is Shea Given, who has joined Bayern Munich. As far as incomings, uh, we've spent 228 million. Um, it's been a, a big, a big summer. So the two that you would have known about already were Romelu Lukaku, who has joined from Anderlecht. Um, he's a young prospect, but is touted uh, to get a lot better in this game. So then up next, we have Neymar, um, who has come in and joined from Santos. As you can see, I paid £23 million uh, for uh, his services. Uh, he's made three appearances for me so far, scoring one goal and collecting one Man of the Match award. As I've mentioned, we had some real issues last season in the goalkeeping department. While Shea Given was old he was a decent goalkeeper however there are much much better goalkeepers out there um, I did continue my pursuit of Manuel Neuer however Schalke were not having any of it so I changed my approach and went for Igor Akinfeev, um, a football manager sort of favorite from years gone by um, and just look at the stats on this guy he is just ridiculous um, he's been playing superb for me so far in the league or in all competitions, sorry, as I could say, he's made some Europa League uh, appearances as well. He's had five appearances for me, conceded just the once, and has kept four clean sheets so far. Um, I did spend 32 million on him. As you can tell, that is quite a lot for a goalkeeper, but you, you must agree that when you look at his attributes, like, and the fact that he's 24 years old in this game, he's going to be at the club for probably my entire stint here, unless I get a ludicrous offer for him. So I, I feel like I've locked up that one position for the remainder of this save, which I'm very happy about. So having secured European qualification into the Europa League, certain players were more open to joining me. Therefore, 
I decided it was a good idea to drop 56 million to bring in Giorgio Cialini from Juventus. Um, he is an absolute rock at the back again. Um, young on this game, really, really actually still quite mobile. 20 uh, natural fitness and 15 pace as well. Outstanding mental attributes all across the board here. He's also got 17 for heading, 17 for marking and 17 for tackling as well. All in all, just an absolute powerhouse at the back. Um, it was mentioned in the comments that I really needed to uh, strengthen my defensive uh, side. Obviously, uh, I have Mika Richards and in the January window last year, I bought Gareth Bale to play at left back. So I really did want to address the centre back areas. Obviously, with Colo Torre moving out, um, I really needed to move some players in. Um, I'm still trying to get rid of Jolien Lescott, but no one wants him. What a surprise. Um, so yeah, Chiellini does come in uh, to uh, bolster that back line. And his partner at the back is none other than Thiago Silva. Um, he is currently receiving specialist treatment for a broken leg. He's only out for a day. I did try and sign him earlier in the window, but uh, he failed his medical, obviously, because he had a broken leg. Um, didn't really notice that. It's probably an error on my my behalf. Um, but yeah, so Thiago Silva comes in. He will be playing alongside Chiellini once he's re uh, rehabbed from his broken leg. Um, really good in the heading, marking and tackling uh, stances as well. Good anticipation, really good influence, good determination. Pretty good positioning, really good work rate as well. And decent physical attributes all across the board. So I'm really hoping my new look defensive unit of Igor Akinfeev Mika Richards, Thiago Silva, Giorgio Cialini and Gareth Bell can really do the work and actually make the difference in us being able to step up and challenge for the title this season. It's been great so far. They've been doing really well in the league, but hopefully they can continue that and kick on once Thiago Silva comes back from his broken leg. Moving up the pitch now, and I decided that spending £40 million uh, pounds on Luka Modric was the right move. Um, I brought him in to play alongside Hansik in the centre midfield roles, and he's been doing pretty good for me so far. Uh, two goals and one assist uh, in the five appearances that he's made for Manchester City so far. Interesting note about this, the Man City supporters were fuming that I bought Luka Modric. Um, I don't know why. He's a quality player, really good all across the board, very nice technically, pretty good mentally, and very good uh, physically, surprisingly. I mean, 10 strength is a little bit of a worry, but it's always going to be with Luka, a player like Luka Modric. Um, but yeah, they were fuming that I bought him. I just don't understand why. He, he's been putting in some decent performances already. Yes, he is on 89,000 a week. Uh, so that is kind of what you would expect. But he has been doing really, really well for me. He's actually been making us tick a lot more in centre midfield. Personally, I feel this is a massive upgrade on Gareth Barry. Um, and only time will tell, but I'm really happy with how Luka Modric has been progressing so far. And so we move on to the duel in the Man City crown. Could I have done it without Sergio Aguero? Of course I couldn't. Um, I I did pursue David Villa. Um because I feel that Davivia is slightly better than uh, Aguero right now in this save. Um, however, Valencia wanted ludicrous money for him. So um, I changed my approach. I saw the comment about Aguero in... I saw the mention about Aguero in the comments. Um, so thank you for that. Um, so I decided to go for it. It cost me 30 million and Adebayor. Um, he's on 135,000 a week. He's taken a little bit of time to get used to the way that we're playing. It's still still early days for the whole team, to be perfectly honest. Um, but he's got a decent return of two goals and three assists in his five appearances. So things are definitely starting to um, go in the right direction for Sergio Aguero. Obviously, as I said, this is the season that Manchester City won their first league title with that Aguero moment. I'm hoping it doesn't come down to the last day of the season, um, fingers crossed. But we shall see. We do have Aguero, so if it needs be, then he will hopefully be the man to give us that league title. So, so far this season, then, we've been doing pretty well. Um, we did draw on the opening day of the season at home to Bolton. I'm just going to show you the stats for this because I feel that I was completely robbed. Um, so here are the match stats. Uh, 17 shots for Man City, 1 to Bolton. 7 on target for Man City, 1 for Bolton. Uh, we had one shot blocked, we hit the woodwork once, we had three clear-cut chances, uh, but yet somehow 
a late header from Johan Almanda rescued a point for Bolton. Um, since then, uh, we beat AA Ghent in the uh, Europa League qualifying. Um, so first leg, we beat them 5-0 at home. And then the second leg, we beat them 2-0 uh, away, thanks to goals from Aguero and Hamsik. Um, in the league, though, we have secured a 1-0 victory over Arsenal and a 1-0 victory over Everton. Um, so that currently leaves us in fourth uh, with the seven points from our three games. Currently, Tottenham are flying. Um, play 4-1-4. I think they beat Manchester United in their last outing. Um, I'm, not, uh, I'm not worried yet. There's still plenty of football to be played. Um, but this is improving. This is slightly improving uh, on last season's performance. Uh, we lost games against Everton. We lost games against Arsenal. Um, obviously, they are big teams in in this period of time, uh, despite their league positions of fifteenth and seventeenth, respectively. Okay, so up next for my Manchester City side is a trip to Villa Park to take on Aston Villa in the Premier League. Okay, so we have an injury to Luka Modric. He picked that up whilst on international duty for Croatia. Um, also, Thiago Silva is not fully fit. Um, although 91 conditioning, that's not too bad. But he has come back from a broken leg. So hopefully I'll give him some minutes in this game. Um, other changes to the team. This is now what we are playing. Um, so Akin in goal. Mika Richards, Nader Manua um, will potentially turn into Thiago Silva. Uh, Chiellini and Gareth Bale. Hamsik is currently now playing alongside Nigel de Jong uh, instead of Modric uh, just because of the injury. Then I have the three there of Di Maria, Eden Hazard and Neymar with Sergio Aguero up front. So we will submit the team and let's get into the game at Villa Park. Interesting to look at the uh, teams that I come up against now. So this is the Aston Villa team. Uh, Brad Friedel in goal, Luke Young, uh, Richard Dunn, Carlos Cuellar, um, Stephen Warnock, Fabian Delft, Stylian Petrov, James Milner and Ashley Young are interesting ones. Uh, Gabby Bonglehor up front with Marco Borello, who I think they must have signed in the summer, mustn't they? They have 12 million uh, paid in the summer. So it's uh, it's going to be an interesting one we will just jump into this the team talk stuff on fm10 is just dreadful it i feel it basically offers nothing our first highlight of the game then hazard crosses the ball in from the corner gets cleared out to gareth bell the ball works its way all the way back to akin uh into di maria into aguero hazard advances into the penalty area but gets pushed wide back to gareth bell who strikes it Friedel can't hold on to it though, um, and Villa are allowed to break themselves. Obviously, I do have to worry about the pace of Gabriel Abonglahor in this game. Obviously, players like James Milner and Ashley Young are still pretty good. Um, the highlight does end there though. Uh, nothing too severe to worry about from a defensive point of view. Uh, Neymar on this right-hand side gets blocked. Hamsik into Hazard, into Di Maria, who hammers it low and past Brad Friedel, and we go 1-0. Nice little team move here from uh, on the right-hand side from Neymar getting tackled, actually. Uh, let's just wait for the replay to go in. So Hamsik picks it up into Hazard, who slices the uh, defence apart, picks out Di Maria on the left, and as I said, calmly slots it below Brad Friedel. One thing I will point out that I have changed this season is within this strategy, we are now set to control instead of uh, attacking. I felt that did help uh, massively uh, when it... God, what a chance that was in the background. Um, a Bongle Horse first shot is saved uh, by Akin Fieve and is pushed out to the uh, other Aston Villa man, but he fires it straight into the side netting. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, I found that being on control really uh, helps um, as opposed to being on attacking. Being on attacking let me uh, susceptible to several counter attacks um, as Aguero just misses another chance. Uh, highlights coming thick and fast in this game. Um, but yeah, I just feel that it was a much better option uh, to have. Um, allows me to dominate the game, as you can kind of see. Um, although, saying that, Villa have probably been the better team. Um, have Just haven't had the same amount of highlights. Um, I'm just waffling now. Just absolute waffle. Um, but yeah, the control seems to be working so far um, as we move through the season. A free kick to us then. I don't know if the highlight will continue. Hazard takes it short to Hamsik. Out to Gareth Bale. Bell into De Jong, who's, as I said, he's not the player I want in that sort of role, but, you know, needs must. Neymar's absolutely rinsed the entire team there. 
Brad Friedel's an absolute beast. A triple save from Brad Friedel there. Just gets up, save, gets up, save, gets up, save. Um, that's helped us pad the stats. But the ball goes into Aguero. Another save from Brad Friedel. Man's a machine. Um, Aston Villa haven't really threatened so far. Um, the defence seems to be able to hold strong. Hazard running through out to Neymar on the right-hand side. Uses his pace to get past Warnock. Ball into the into the penalty area, but obviously Aguero is not going to be winning those in the air. Corner comes in from Hazard into Chiellini. Back out to Hazard. Ball goes in towards Anoa, um, but is unable to get anything on it. Chiellini picks the ball up. Looks for Aguero, but Brad Friedel is alert and off his line to stop the Argentinian. Um, Brad Friedel has been nothing short of exceptional so far this game. Um, Aguero, not necessarily in the right sort of position there for my sort of attacking forward. Um, you want him a little bit more inside the penalty area. But that is half time. We are doing pretty well then. Um, pretty solid uh, grades all across the board. I'm just going to say uh, I am pleased because I am. Uh, Brad Friedel has just been absolutely phenomenal. At keeping the ball out of the back of the net other than that Di Maria effort. Um, corner comes in there from Villa, first highlight of the second half. And I think that was John Carew I just saw there headed over the crossbar. Wow. Um, I wasn't going to, I wasn't commentating on that because it was a free kick which Akinfeev was taking in our own half. But it looks like the goalkeeper's got himself an assist. As you can just see here, long ball hits it up front. Aguero's uh, left Richard Dunn for dead. Friedel doesn't come and claim, and he is able to just apply the finish and give us a two goal lead. Um, now we are in the lead. I think now might be the time to maybe give Thiago Silva his debut. I did just see that Chiellini is on a booking. Um, interesting scenes here. Akinfeev comes miles outside his penalty area, but is a able to get bailed out by the defence. Into Carew, who uh, forces another save from Akinfeev. So I am just going to pause it here super quick. I'm going to go in. Uh, Chiellini and Anua, both in 6.9, both on 82%. Um, however, Chiellini is on a booking. So just to be sure, we will give Thiago Silva his Premier League and Man City debut. So we're into the final five minutes then. Uh, short corner comes into Thiago Silva, who gets absolutely clattered by Richard Dunn. Um, I think Hamsik is my leading penalty taker. So we have a penalty to put this game to bed. 3-0, up six Hamsik, and it is a goal. As I said, penalty from Hamsik there, and he just slots past Brad Friedel, making it 3-0, putting the game beyond doubt. Um, that will secure the three points. As I said, another good performance, uh, three different goal scorers and a, another clean sheet for the Russian wall that is Igor Akinfeev. Uh, sensational performance. We'll click continue. Um, yep. Key man, Man City, uh, Akinfeev. 3-0 uh, no victory then. And where does that put us in the league? So we do move up to fourth um, on 10 points. Uh Whilst we do have a game in hand on Chelsea, you'd like to think that we would overtake them. However, as I said, Tottenham are on absolute tear. Played 5-1-5, five, five, uh, scored 12, conceded 4. Um, so they look like the early pace setters so far in the Premier League. Okay, guys, so I will leave you there. Um, we do have some Europa League uh, group games uh, coming up as well as the uh, League Cup third round. I've um, got quite a lot going on. I'm hoping to uh, bring it back for these uh, games here against Manchester United, Tottenham and Liverpool respectively. Be really interested to see how this new look side gets on against Manchester United. So until then guys, take care and I will see you very soon. <laughs>